Hello, welcome to Mogli TV. Today we're going to talk about something that gets requested a lot, which is a timeline for Resolume. I'm afraid that Resolume already has a timeline. Actually, it's got many timelines. It's got timelines all over the shop. Let's jump into it. So here we are in Resolume. And first and foremost, this whole clip panel that we've got here. That entire thing is a timeline. If you use the clip panel in conjunction with the autopilot, which you've got on your layer panel and per clip, you can actually use this as a kind of conventional timeline in which you sequence different things in a very specific order. You can even allocate specific durations for the clips. And although it doesn't work like a traditional timeline in the sense of having keyframes, you can still do quite a lot. And believe it or not, I've used this often to edit videos. This, for example, is what I used to create the promo video for BPM Audio Shapes, which is available to buy on Gumroad. And as you can see, it's very simple. You've got a clip here, which has got the soundtrack for the whole thing. Then you've got layer with your different text. Then you've got different animations and some background. So basically, if I just launch that, it will play As you can see, if we go into one of the clips here, you can see under the transport control that it sets beats two. But then if we open the autopilot, then you've got loops one. So between those two settings, you can specify exactly how long you want this to be. If this was assigned to timeline rather than to BPM sync, then this will be in seconds, it won't be beats. So you can be quite specific one to be it's a bit of a pain sometimes especially if you've got really long clips but it is absolutely doable so it's possible to edit videos i'm not saying that this is the best solution for a lot of things but if you're editing videos that contain uh, resolute generative content for example this makes a lot more sense than having to render all this material separately and then we have to import it into after effects and recreate this thing and then once you've got that done you're locked into the original source clips while here i can still tweak my my generative content so there are a lot of advantages to be had using this over editing with a timeline based editor so to use the clip panel as a timeline in that manner all you need to do is use the autopilot in the playing forward mode and it'll act like any other timeline based editor it'll just start one end and go through all the clips if you want to disrupt this you can do non-linear editing as well and start having things that branch onto random clips or whatever but that's a different matter which is probably more useful for performance than for editing or for using a timeline in a more traditional sense so where are all these other timelines that i talk about well basically every single envelope is a timeline uh, it's uh, time and it's a line and uh, yeah you're just defining things that happen in a specific period of time by drawing that envelope so let's have a look at that if you don't use envelopes I strongly recommend that you start using them because they open up a whole world of possibilities for all kinds of different things from animation to sound reaction. It really steps up your game and allows you to do a lot of things that you cannot do without them. And it just gives you so much more control over absolutely everything. So let's have a look at envelopes as used in the context of a timeline. I've got this generative clip here, which I'm just going to re-trigger, which is got, although you can hear it now, this clip's got this audio track on here. So that is our timeline representation. I mean, you can scrub through this, and as you can see, you'll go through the clip, uh, both sound and video, despite the clip being generative. If you see this envelope I've got underneath, like the speed of this, is assigned to clip position what that means is that this marker will be moving at the same rate as the marker that we've got over our sound clip over here so effectively there is a correlation between that motion and this motion that means that i can draw whatever i want in this envelope in relation to specific points of that clip and although being really, really accurate with the specific timing on things can be a bit of a pain, especially if you've got a really long clip, it's still way faster and way quicker to do a lot of things like this than it is to do in traditional timeline editing. Besides that, it's very easy to, once you've got your basic envelope drawn for a specific audio clip, for example, you can just go over here 
save that envelope and then reuse it anywhere and it'll be in sync with whatever events that happen on your sound clip for example you don't need to use sound clips for this you could do this over like specific animation clip you've got in which you want to animate maybe a bit of like glare or something that happens at a specific point in the animation you could easily do that from wrestling without having to go into something like After Effects. So here I've got this clip from my VJ Pack cassette, which is also available on Gumroad, link in the description. And uh, as you can see here, I've got this playing. So it's playing in two beats from there to there. This just slow this down a bit so we can see a bit more clearly what's happening here. Let's say, for example, that we want to animate so that there is a bit of a like a, a glare and explosion maybe when the cassette actually comes into formation well it's very simple to do that all you need to do is just we can go over to our effects over here look for bloom stick it in there now we can adjust the bloom that we want let's bring the threshold down so once we've got our effect as we actually want it all we need to do is well i mean there's many ways you could do this you could animate the opacity you could animate the amount let's try with animating the amount so if we go as i mentioned to clip position now you can see that the amount is going in sync with our transport control and if we add an envelope to it this is where we can get creative with the way we apply this effect so let's just stop the animation and we can scrub to the point where there should be like that explosion which is probably at the very beginning so what we want to do is bring that up add another point there and that one down and now play and see what happens now we've instantly got that flash you could use this same technique to do whatever you want wherever you want it along the timeline which makes it really quick and easy to enhance clips that you've already got without having to re-render them and it also leaves them open-ended as in you could have a clip that's got a flash that you can move around wherever you want depending on the circumstances which is extremely handy and saves hard drive space as you don't need to have 25 copies of the same clip with different tweaks on them so in a nutshell, that is it. I'm going to dive a lot deeper into envelopes at some point because they really are one of those magical things. Once you start using them, you'll be wondering how you were doing without them before. In the meantime, please like and subscribe as it helps my channel and I hope to see you here next time.